We give God thanks and glory and honor today, tonight, as you're watching me. We praise God. Saints, everyone, blessings to you. Every single day, you can invite new angels into your day if you are thankful, if you're praising God. A lot of times, your spirit can be ready to feed you something, but your soul is not ready. That's why a lot of times people drop the ball when Jesus is revealing himself. They say that's not of God because their soul hasn't been renewed. That's why, that's why you see that all the time. Romans, is that Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23? Talked about being renewed in the spirit of your mind. A lot of times if your mind is not renewed, when it comes time for the spirit of God to transfer something to your soul, your soul going to reject it. And so your soul can become your enemy and it can actually be the one stopping you from receiving stuff. Now, saints, now this is where you don't need an enemy on the outside. You become your own enemy. Because when Adam sinned, his soul became his enemy. He didn't. His soul became his enemy. So a lot of times your soul can make you an enemy of God because it hasn't been renewed. It hasn't been trained. That's why your soul, your soul got to be trained over time because here's what you're doing. As you pray in the spirit, even the Bible said that you speaketh mysteries. So what your soul is now being synced. It's like a Bluetooth is coming into sync with your spirit, man, so that your soul could just be one with God. Now, saints, there's, there's not a, man, a lot of men that can master that fully or women that can master that fully because here's what happened. The soul will try to lean over to the flesh realm because that's what it's used to. That's why you see some people, they start off with God, then they run back. In the realm of a uh, prophetic impartation you can't even impart to people whose soul is not linked with you when people's soul is double minded you can't even impart the prophetic to them it don't matter how anointed you are because their soul hasn't been tied to you it's tied to 50 other ministers so there's a small impartation that they receive from you Elisha received the fullness of Elijah because Elijah was his only voice. So it was very easy for Elisha to receive that double portion. Now, saints, I want you to see this. When Elijah told Elisha, you have asked a hard thing. When he asked him for a double portion of his spirit, why did Elijah say you have asked a hard thing because Elijah knew that he was going to have to bypass his soul to receive it. And that's the test. He was going to have to bypass his flesh to receive it because it wasn't going to happen by natural means. It's going to happen supernaturally. Which shows you that there are a lot of things that are in the spirit that are hard things. Why are they hard things? Because you got to overcome your sight. Okay, if you got $5 in your bank account and God said, I'm going to give you a mansion. You got to overcome a, it's, it's a hard thing because your flesh always going to be telling you, you only got $5. Your soul is going to say, man, we need to agree with the flesh because right now we only got $5. But in the spirit realm, you got a multi-million dollar house. Once God spoke it to you, you already had it. That's why he spoke it to you, because he wants you to start speaking it to yourself as well. Now, here's the crazy thing. A lot of times, God can promise you something, and you never repeated what God promised you. From a place of decree, you just 
spoke about it from a place of discussion. Decreeing the promise and discussing the promise are two different things. You can discuss what God has called you to do or you can decree what God has called you to do. You can discuss your finances or you can decree your finances. You can discuss the events that's going to happen in your life or you can decree the events that's going to happen in your life. The decreeing is more intentional and that's where the power of God comes and backs you and releases the anointed for something to happen that's miraculous. Jesus did not discuss the healing. He decreed the healing. And when he decreed it, they began to receive it and they conceived it all together. See, you got to be pregnant. You got to be the one pushing and you got to be the one delivering at the same time. You got three different roles, be impregnated, be pushing in the labor and be delivering. You taking out the baby at the same time It's all on you. God put it all on you. According to the power that works in you, he doing exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in you. So Ephesians 3.20 requires you, you the co-worker with God. And as you're working with God, he making the manifestation come to pass, but he testing to see how well. Would you take on your Godship? How well would you move with the Godship that he gave to you? If you move with the Godship that he gave to you, you'll see miracle after miracle, power after power, grace after grace, supply after supply. That's why the Bible tell you in John chapter 1, he let us know in John chapter 1, what he said, we have received grace for grace. Meaning after one grace, there's another grace. After that grace, there's a next grace. And all of these are the ability of Jesus. So every ability of Jesus got another ability of Jesus. Take you to another ability of Jesus. Into another ability of Jesus. After another ability of Jesus. That's what happened when you're praying. You go from one level of strength to the next level of strength. To the other level of strength. That's what happened when you're paying attention. You go from one level of wisdom to the next level of wisdom. To the next level of wisdom. That's what happened when you sow and seed. You go to one level of finances, to the next level of finances. You go from hundreds to two hundreds, to thousands, to millions, to billions. God got unlimited grace for grace for grace for grace for grace. And every time you operate in one and your master one, he promotes you to the next because he's ready to cause you to reveal another side of Godship to the earth. And when the Godship comes, you're going to be up there doing other things for other people. You want to train them how to move in their Godship. But you got to master yours. If you struggling, how God going to use you? As an example. Saints, do you understand that some of you all, God want to use you to be an example, but you struggle too much. He can't pitch struggle as the portrait. Because you're going to misrepresent Jesus. That's witchcraft. Because Jesus don't struggle, he double. He said, I'll give you double for your shame. The shame lifestyle is over. No more shame financially, no more shame physically, no more shame mentally. All that shame is over with. You ain't got no more shame in your life. You can't fall short of the glory no more. There's too much power in you, too much spirit of God in you, too much wisdom in you, too much grace in you, too much understanding in you, too much supernatural power on the inside of you that nothing can hold you back. You coming out of the prison and you taking people out of their chains with you. You've been created to move in double finances. God ain't talking about no need. God was talking about he supply your need because he, he knew that you weren't ready to receive the overflow yet. God ain't dealing with no need. God up there rich, man. God up there walking on streets of gold. What you think this is, man? God ain't God walking on the money that you praying for. You think that he got a money issue? Jesus ain't got no financial issue. That's why he picked the money in the fish mouth because he ain't got no financial issue. You ain't got no financial issue either, but your mind hasn't been renewed yet. See, see, your, your, your soul want to link up with your bank account. But your spirit want to link you to your God account. My God. See, see, the, your, your bank account and your God account are enemies. And God ain't willing to submit to your bank account. God gonna make your bank account submit to your God account if you keep on sowing. 
See, you, you got to prove that you trust God's system. What did he say in Malachi? He said, prove me. Why would God tell you to do that? That means you got to do something that I'm telling you to do. You got to give and sow so that I can know that you believe that I'm for real. That's how, I, that's how I'm going to check you. That's how I'm going to examine you. That's how I'm going to determine whether or not to release this money to you. What you want? Cash? Check? What you want? Money? Order? I need 50 people to share this broadcast. Cash? Check? What you want? Tip? A dollar? What you want? Cash? Check, chip? Money? Order? What you want? Chips? What you a 666 spirit? You mark of the beast spirit. You want you want some chips. Now look at this. All financial transactions are in your spirit. All financial transactions are in your spirit. You got the wealth transference already in your spirit. Saints, listen. Here's the problem with the, with the body of Christ. A lot of times you look into the outside for something that's already in the inside. You're talking about the outside. On the inside is your miracle. You're looking for it on the outside. That's why you don't see nothing. Saints, let me give you a secret. When I was broke and I didn't have no physical finances. See, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something real powerful. You always got invisible finances. You always do, 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You always got invisible finances. It's already around you. It's already above you. It's already in the invisible realm. It's already in the spirit realm. You always got plenty of money. But see, in the physical realm, I didn't see nothing. I remember waking up one morning. I said, in the name of Jesus, I decree financial miracles. Why, why did I start doing this? Because I prayed in the spirit all morning from 4 to 7 a.m. in the morning. So my spirit was praying in the spirit. Here's a secret to how I learned how to pray accurately and talk to God as a king. Because I didn't approach him with my natural language offhand. You know, uh... Some of y'all approach God offset. We ain't talking about Cardi B either, man. Just, so, so, so some of y'all approach God offset. Why? Because your, you, your, your setup is all wrong. All right? So, so, so when, you, when you start talking to him now, when you start talking to him, you already offset. You, you, ain't, you ain't set your mind on things above. You didn't set your mind on... Uh, the word of God, you didn't set your mind on his ability, his office, his functionality. So you offset. Now, you got to step back into the Colossians anointing. Okay, the Colossians anointing. Hear what you want to catch with the Colossians anointing. This is where you set your mind and you treat your thoughts like an alarm clock. Saints, do you know how you pick the alarm clock when to go off? That's what you got to do to your mind. You got to set your mind. On when it's time to go off. You say, what does that mean? Go off on the devil and say, enough is enough. Go off on your situation and say, I will not be broke like this. I will not keep on living paycheck to paycheck. I'm not going to keep letting myself get away from sowing, get it away from giving, because this is what God told me to do if I'm going to walk in supernatural abundance. I'm not going to step aside from what God has promised me that if he, I do it, he's going to meet me in this. See, saints, some of y'all ain't having an encounter with Jehovah Jireh yet. You had an encounter with Jesus. So, so you say from your sin, but not your debt. You say it from sin, but not lack. So you got born again, but your money didn't. It? Your money's still underneath a serpent system. My God. So in one area, you received the second atom for your soul, but you didn't receive the second atom for your substance. So the spirit of God can only speak to you about prayer, but he can't speak to you about prosperity. He can speak to you about worship, but he can't speak to you about wealth. 
Don't become annihilated from the fullness of the Godhead. Because I'm going to say something real strong. The financial anointing draws you closer to God and draws other closer to God through you. The financial anointing. Some, somebody remember that in your mind. The financial anointing draws you closer to God and, and, and draws others closer to God through you. The financial anointing reveals that God exists to an atheist. What you going to tell an atheist that God exists? You going to tell them that Jesus died on the cross? They don't believe that. <laughs> you going to preach it to them? They're just going to scorn you. What's the evidence? What are the results of Jesus dying from the cross? You sick? You broke? What, what are they going to say? You ain't got no evidence. What, what, lip service. Lip service ain't going to change nothing. Finances, financial anointing is the demonstration of the Holy Spirit to an atheist. Mere kuzi via la karamaso. Rando mosika ramandia kole. Financial anointing is evidence of God's existence to an unbeliever. Listen, when the world realized that Jesus take care of you better than Satan been taking care of them with stolen goods, they going to come over on Jesus' side and want to serve Jesus because they realize that Jesus ain't boring. Because most, most, most people that call themselves believers are boring as a mug. That's why they get mad at people like me. Because they boring. Everybody's snoring. They foreign. All of them. Then they get mad. Huh? They got mad at me because I was wearing shiny jackets. <laughs> they gonna get real mad at me at this Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. <laughs> Don't get mad because you can't wear no jacket, man. If you're okay with wearing your, your thrift store suit, I am at peace with that. Don't get mad. If you're okay with your thrift store suit, I'm okay with your thrift store suit. You can't get mad at somebody because they're free. We ain't bothering you. Don't bother us. If you want to eat uru the noodles, you can't get mad at somebody that won't eat at the restaurant. Could a restaurant been made available to you? But if you jealous instead of zealous, your finances is going to become rebellious. See, see, one of the keys to wealth is rejoice for other people's victory. One of the keys for wealth is rejoice for other people's victory. Be happy when somebody is blessed. Be happy when somebody does not fall short of the glory. Be happy. See, you can't have witchcraft in your heart and wealth in your hand. Write that down. You can't have witchcraft in your heart and wealth in your hand. Those two don't go together. If it's from God, you're going to have to master the love so that you can receive the finances from above. And, and, and saints, uh, uh, sometimes when you're a wealthy individual, you're going to have to stay individual. You can't link up with people. You, you caught that? Sometimes when you are a wealthy individual, you have to stay an individual. You can't link up with folks. Hmm? Why? Because people be up there, they'll mess up the flow of the spirit in your life and have you up there thinking all broke all over again. Saints, I... Man, I was paying for the ticket. And, and by the way, I want to tell everybody in JHM, thank you for helping me. It's because you sowing money that I'm able to do a lot of things for the gospel that I'm doing right now. 
Saints, I was getting tickets for everybody in my team and everything. And when I would look at the ticket, Saints, the ticket, they had went way over 3,000, went over 4,000. I got started. Ah, <laughs> Saints, woo Boy, boy, in my mind, I had a flashback. I thought I was, boy, boy, what, boy. Boy, I was going crazy in my mind. Boy, I was thought, man, I thought that I was, oh, Jesus. I said, Jesus, the creditor man is coming, come get me. Because I'm about to, I'm about to work a scheme up in here. Ooh, boy, boy, I was going wild, boy. <laughs> Until I had to take about a whole hour and then Jesus said, son, sow the money into the gospel. Let's do it. I got you. Boy, but after I saw them figures, oh. <laughs> Saints, when I saw figures, guess what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not talking about my team. When I saw figures, I thought I was seeing niggas. I was hey, this, 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 these are niggas right here trying to rob me. They, they got guns in their hands. They come and come hand me up. They got me. I got, listen, I, 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 listen, I plead, to, I, you ain't going to take me out. And listen, when it got over 4,000 and was all the way all over 5,000, I started, oh, Jesus, what the, oh, 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 oh. And listen, after a while, Jesus had to, <laughs> Jesus had to tell me, sow that thing to the gospel. <laughs> but say, listen. Before then, you see all them figures, you be like, hey, 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 what? Hey, 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 what's going on here? <laughs> so, since I bought the ticket real quick, I say, okay. Hey, okay, man. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, okay, Jesus. You know, you start talking like you, you know, like you about to go box somebody. Okay, Jesus. These are on the main line. Tell them what you want. These are on the main line. Now, then, then you got, then you, you see you want the old church. My these she got to finish her verse on the main line. And she, she had a stroke four years ago. Now, don't get mad at her, cause she's still doing her best. Tell him what and she gonna hit that last note. Wah. And she not gonna finish until she do that head bounce. Wah. Jesus on the main line. Just get on it, just, just knock you out with it. Like, God, come on now. Out there, you, you see them older women, they don't play around with them. They'll, they'll command you to take Viagra. You get an older woman, she up there, she's still ready. She's going she gonna to make you get that Viagra. She ain't going to ask you. She ain't going to say, honey, you going to get She say, no, you're going to take it right now at 12 noon. You're going to drink this orange juice with it. I got you some juice and all that. I got you some Gatorade, some... <laughs> got you some ginger ale. Got you some apple cider. <laughs> got you some apple cider. You got to have some apple cider now. <laughs> the little grandchildren come over at 1.30 p.m. Grandma, why is Grandpa, why is that thing standing up right there? On, is this something in the bed? <laughs> Now, Saints, <laughs> look at this, Saints. Watch this here. So, Saints, I had to get a revelation that I had the money. And, Saints, when I, when, I, when I sold that money into everything, I felt a release. What I'm telling you is that Jesus still tests us with money, no matter what level you go to. And here's... What you want to catch. 
the more financial obedience you have, the more money you're going to have on the earth right now. Listen, I'm not talking about when you get to heaven. I said the more you, uh, the more financial obedience you have, the more money you're going to have right now. Because here, here's what God is always going to do. He's going to test you with sowing. Listen, saints, I'm going to tell you something about what I learned about Jesus. I remember when I was first seeking Jesus, I was praying and fasting, doing all that. I was skinny like a bone. You would have thought that, you would have thought that, you know, I was dying. I, I came down, blown bones, nothing. But. Then I started having Jesus teach me about the seed. And the Lord began to show me there's more to life than you just saying that you praying and fasting. There is a financial assignment. See, saying some of y'all don't catch it, that sowing is a, fine, is a divine financial assignment. See, see, a lot of us are good at fulfilling our assignment, at praying. We good at fulfilling our assignment, at uh, forgiving other folks. We good at fulfilling our assignment with memorizing scriptures. But we not good in our assignment at sowing. And this is where we lack. Saints, here's the powerful thing. Remember, a lot of us are Martha's financially. This real powerful. Some of us are Mary's, but some of us are Martha's. Now you hear the revelation? Because Martha, God, remember Jesus told her, you lack this one thing, my God. And, and Jesus loved Martha. He wasn't, a, he wasn't hating on her or angry at her, but he said, you lack this one thing. Notice what Jesus began to do. He was telling her, girl, you got everything down pat, but when it comes to this, I can't get you to obey me. You shut down on me. When I start dealing with you with this, you too high, you too hard headed, you too stubborn, you too stuck in your ways. You don't want to let me take over this area. This area make you stumble. Every time I get here and I keep on trying you in the same area, I'm going to keep on testing you. I'm going to keep on pitting you through the similar occurrence because I want this lacking to become abundance. No more poorness. I need to get this side of you out of darkness. You got to be free. Saints, you, you see some people, they don't believe in sowing. I've had a lot of people like that. They don't believe in sowing. When you talk about sowing, talk about, hey, here you go, here you go. I thought that he was different. I thought that prophet Joshua was different. The prophet Joshua, I thought he was different. First he was talking about some healing. First he was talking about Jesus. First he was talking about deliverance, now he come talking about wealth. I thought Prophet Joshua was different. And then when they start seeing people get financial miracles, they come write me in secret. Uh, Prophet Joshua, I want to show my first seed. I want to see it did work. All right, now I'm not all too, I ain't all too well on this. I'm not all too well on this. I just got my social security. I want to see if this works. And then when Jesus started doing the miraculous, now they the one telling other people to sow. Now they the one even bringing people to sow. Why? Because one side of them was lacking. They didn't know that this is Jesus and this is just a way for Jesus to get you into a life of pleasure. Do you know that is the will of God for you to have pleasure? Not that pleasure that you be trying to produce. That fake bootleg pleasure. Pleasure. That pleasure is not from God. I'm talking about Jesus prescribed pleasure. Meaning that he scheduled this for you. Meaning he doing this for you. It's the Holy Ghost behind it. Wait. The Holy Ghost behind it. Wait a minute. Nah, I, I, I don't want to throw the Holy Ghost underneath a bus like that. I don't mean like he behind it. You know, it might be something. Now look at this here. The Holy Ghost. He prescribed it. All right. Now this is what I want you to see. Before God give you a uh, supernatural money, He gonna have you make extraordinary risk. 
where God ain't even going to try to convince you before he give you the instruction. He's just going to see where you step out on the water where you, when you don't know where the lifeguard is. Will you step out of the plane and jump when you don't see no sign of a parachute? Before God give you supernatural money, he going to have you take extraordinary risk. I've sown money when I owed people. I've done that before. Because I realized that the money that they were saying I owed, I didn't have it no way. So how am I produce it? I got to produce it by work or I can produce it by worship and wisdom. I chose worship and wisdom and it worked for me. See, I could have choose work and went seven years trying to get something through. Or I can choose wisdom and worship and it'll work for me. That, that's how we flow in the supernatural. You don't understand how supernatural your kingdom is. A lot of times you're trying to work it out. When God wants you to worship it out. He wants you to wisdom it out. Yeah. The last term of wisdom is dumb. Because when you act wise, you make the devil look dumb. Because the strategy that he had against you will make, make him look dumb. Because when you act wise, when you function in wisdom, he look dumb. In the last two words of Jesus is us. So Jesus included you in his name. Oh my God. So, so what Jesus did was he put us in his function, us in his Name, us, in his identity. Jesus, us, us. Je so, 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 why did the Bible say uh, uh, his name has been exalted far above all things? The every knee should bow. Because when you say Jesus, his name was exalted, but your name, but you was exalted because you in his name. So when you say in the name of Jesus, that's why you got the authority to tell the father, I receive wealth. I receive abundance. I receive increase. I receive more than enough. I receive health because Jesus has us in it. So when you say in the name of Jesus, you just called yourself a recipient of the inheritance. You just called yourself a beneficiary. You just called yourself a, 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 a co-worker. In the divine Godhead, you are heir with Christ and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Mazokuli vasokole dianda lovosi alaka. Randa mazoko repe kestepe. Randa ramasoko. So, so when you say in the name of Jesus, it's not just the Lord, it's us. So we working together. We releasing authority. And we both are a team to get the dream to manifest. You and Jesus are a dream to get uh, a team to get the dream to be seen. Saints, this, this is why when you are decreeing money, decree in the name of Jesus. What's going to happen when you decree in the name of Jesus? You are releasing divine partnership with you and the Lord financially, and he not broke. So, so here's what's going to happen. If he not broke, and you are in his team, and you is in his name, and you are in his functionality, here's what's going to take place. You releasing that same authority. You'll have the same results. See, saints, that's all I did. I made up in my mind. I wasn't going to be living no average life. Now, after Jesus is rich, I ain't going to be living no sick life after Jesus is whole. I'm not going to be living no 
a life of, of struggle when Jesus is uh, liberated. I'm not going to be living no life of confusion when Jesus is peace. I'm not going to live no life of storms when Jesus is deliverance. All of these characteristics of Jesus, why sit here and die? That's what the four lepers said. See, somebody got out of their flesh and said, forget this mess. Forget all this stuff talking about, listen, uh, I'm just going to go to heaven. I, there's something down here for me. I told this to my sons one time. I told them. I told this to my sons one time. And it was real powerful. I said to them, I think it was Juan. I told them, when you see men and women asking God to take them home, they're cowards. They're cowards. They don't want to deal with what the Holy Spirit telling them to deal with. So they're trying to find a way of escape. God can be telling somebody to disconnect from somebody, disconnect from something, take authority over their ministry, take authority over uh, how things are being run in their life. And when they don't want to do it, they become cowards. They start telling them, take me home. I won't go home. I won't see Jesus. I see Jesus every day. I can't say, oh, man, I, I, I won't go to heaven to see Jesus. I see Jesus every day. My mind is focused. On the Lord. My mind is focused on the spirit of God. I don't need 50 people. To boost me. My mind. Is taking on. The spirit realm of Jesus. Remember Jesus said. The same thing I see my father do. That's what I do. You notice that right. Because what Jesus was dealing. He was dealing with the supernatural. Of. The seer's anointing. He was looking in the spirit realm. And as he looked in the spirit realm, he was able to see the father doing things in heaven. And he just repeated it here on the earth. That's what I do. That's what I do. See, saints, you've been called to do the same thing. Take what you see the father do in the spirit realm and then bring it into manifestation here on the earth and get the same results. But you got to see in the spirit realm. Let me, let me tell you something. Seeing in the spirit is not all that hard. Number one, master meditation. And here's what I mean by meditation. Have a continuous focus on Jesus. Something divine. Something that is in scripture. That is supernatural to how you want to function. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Then your eyes will start functioning in the spirit. Then your eyes will start functioning in the spirit. But you're going to have to get that down pat. Master meditation. That means that you don't let the devil intervene with your thought process. See, saints, I don't let Satan interrupt my thoughts. Some of y'all, you live 50, 40, 30, 20. Some of y'all, listen, if you're 17 years old and you still don't know how to discern the voice of Satan yet, that's horrible. What you've been doing all these years, if, even if you're 14, you don't know his voice, you don't know Satan's voice. You don't know when Satan talking to you and God talking to you. You should know that by now. Some of you all, I say this to challenge you. You should know the voice of God by now. I say this to challenge you, to strike a chord in you. You should not be double-minded. You should not be asking for doggone clarity at this point. Some of y'all 30, 20, you 17, you should not be asking for no doggone clarity. You should be flowing with God by now. I'm saying this to provoke you. You don't know the voice of Satan now? You live 20 year plus years in this serpent spirit. He always talking to us and we don't know his voice yet. We don't know when Satan trying to trick us out of our promised land. You don't know when Satan trying to trick you out of your finances, trick you out of your relationship with your man of God. You ain't got to be a rocket scientist to know 
If God sent Elijah to me and somebody come tell me something about Elijah, either God is retarded or you. I pick you, dog, on it. Look at your edges. <laughs> you know what I mean? I need 50 more people to share this broadcast. Retweet me on Twitter right now. I need about 100 people to share me on Facebook. I need 100 people to share me on Facebook. I need 50 people to retweet me on Twitter. I need 50 people to retweet me on Twitter. <laughs> What you what you what you what you think this is, man? God ain't crazy. <laughs> God ain't bipolar. <laughs> God, God gonna send somebody to me, then he gonna send you to me at the same time to tell me about somebody that he sent to me. Wow. Thank you for showing me how dumb thou art. Saints, let me just tell you this too. Some of y'all need to stop letting Satan make you look like a fool. Because let me give you something. If demons still come talk to you with deception, they disrespecting your anointing. Not even your man of God's anointing. They disrespecting yours. If evil spirits can talk to you, about your man of God, evil spirits don't respect you in the spirit realm yet. Because when demons respect you, they don't talk to you a certain way because they know you're a general. I don't have certain evil spirits that talk to me now that used to talk to me back then because they know who I am. And they don't want to die prematurely. <laughs> they don't want to be dead in the streets. Mouth full of blood and head full of heat. I need 50 more people. To retweet me on Twitter. I need 50 more people to retweet me on Twitter. I need 100 people to share me on Facebook. Some, some of y'all ain't do it the last time. You didn't do it the last time. How I know you ain't do it because the broadcast didn't freeze up. Some of y'all ain't do it last time. I need 100 people to, to re retweet retweet right now. If you, if you are on Facebook, share me on Facebook. Share me on Facebook. If you are on Twitter, if you on Tweety Tweet, Tweety Tweet, Tweety Tweet. You don't tweet the tweet and, and, and retweet me right now. If Satan's still talking to your mind, daughter, he don't respect you in the spirit. See, if you in depression, demons are disrespecting your authority. If you are double-minded, demons are disrespecting your rank. They saying that you ain't nobody. You, we your boss. We don't care what you talk about, no Jesus. We your boss. You ain't got no man of God. We your God. Demons are disrespecting you. I'm going to say this to you. A lot of people don't understand this. If your man of God can't tell you what to do, demons will. That's what they're going to do. If your man of God can't tell you what to do, demons going to tell you what to do. Saints, this is why we see so many people, evil spirits, they take them one area, bring them there, and bring them back. They take them all over the place. Do you understand that there's some spirits that take Somebody that had an encounter with God from one place of stupid to the next place of stupid to the next place of stupid. And this person had a great destiny, but just could not discern the voice of Satan. Had a great destiny. But never let the Lord equip them and anoint them. Let me, give you a, let me give you an understanding of this. Evil spirits, when they don't believe that you have a strong enough mantle on you, they disrespect you in your thought life. So mental struggle is a revelation that evil spirits don't honor you yet in your ranking. Let me show you something. When Jesus was on the 40 day and 40 night fast, we see that Satan came to him and said, bow down and worship me. After he defeated Satan in that realm, you never see those same temptations again.
Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. You never see Satan ever come back to Jesus again and say, turn these stone into bread. You never see Satan come and tell Jesus again, bow down and worship me. I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. You never saw him ever again come to Jesus with that same approach because Jesus shut him down and he had to respect Jesus in the spirit realm as the son of God. Because that's what the whole conversation was about. If thou be the son of God. And he showed him, I am the son of God. So he could not challenge his sonship in that realm again. Now, let me show you something. Jesus did not prove to Satan that he was the son of God. By doing what Satan told him to do. He proved that he was the son of God by not doing what Satan told him to do. See, you're not going to prove yourself even in the satanic kingdom until you start releasing satanic disobedience. You're not going to get respect in the satanic kingdom until you master satanic disobedience. That you disobey the satanic. You disobeyed the satanic because you decided, hey, I'm not going to do what Satan is telling me to do. I'm not going to follow it. That's how. That's how. Jesus proved that he was the son because he didn't listen to the enemy. You prove that you're a woman of God when you don't listen to the enemy. You prove that you're a man of God when you don't listen to the enemy. You don't prove that you're a man of God because you prayed, because you fasted. You prove that you are a man of God, a woman of God, when you don't listen to the enemy. So here's what God does. To prove you, he'll let the enemy come talk to you. Because now, in the enemy talking to you, is going to be a revelation of whether or not you're a son of God. Because those that are led by the Spirit... Those are the sons of God. So God ain't going, God ain't going to prove you just because you say, Lord, I love you so much. What you going to do when somebody hate the Lord and come talk to you? Saints, it's amazing that in our generation, lesbians have discernment. How could a lesbian tell you that another woman is not a woman of God and you believe them? That's a lesbian. Doggone it. Blessed be his name. If the lesbian is a doggone lesbian and they so warped that they up there licking another woman like a doggone cat, like a doggone animal and species, a species, a species, a species. I, I'm not. On repeat. I just said that three times. She's so crazy that she licking another woman. But she got enough discernment to tell you who is Jezebel. Wow. How could you receive some. How could you receive divine discernment. From someone living a sinful lifestyle. Because they can't even discern that they're on their way to hell. Much less save you. But yet, we listen to people. Saints, I've had people with tattoos all of their body. Say, you know, Prophet Joshua, he, 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 you see how he dressed? Wait, wait. Nigga, you got gel pens all over your neck, your neck, your neck vein. You got gel pens all right here. Scorpion going all the way up in here. Got a Mike Tyson do all the way around here, this mug here. Like a headband. But then, 
they'll start judging and say, oh, you know, the, the man of God ain't dressed. Saints, look at who we go to for discernment. People that are not even living holy lives. We look for somebody to receive discernment from. And the person is not even saved. So how God is telling them to save me from somebody and they don't even know how to save themselves from the devil. God is telling me to help you to be delivered. But I'm not delivered. God is telling me to protect your soul. But my soul is in danger. And our generation look to people like that. That are not even saved. Not even delivered. Not even living a righteous life. We look for somebody like that to give us discernment. Saints, the Bible said, by their fruits, you shall know them. Since our generation is so funny. We try to run from fruits. You don't have to guess if a man is a man of God. As a matter of fact, there are some men of God I don't deal with them. Because they're too jealous of me. I ain't going to do them no harm. But them niggas, something wrong with their broke self. They're just a whole bunch of niggas. And Jesus know they're niggas. I talked to Jesus about them. I said, Jesus, these are some niggas. He said, son, I know. I keep them at a distance. I only bring people close to me that are not niggas. I bring people close to me. I, I keep them at a distance. I know that. But when you get close to me, they're going to discern you. If anybody get close to Jesus, you're a woman or a man, there can be another woman of God. There can be another man of God. If they're at a distance, they're going to hate on you. It's going to happen. You notice, David never fought Saul to kill him. But he knew who Saul was. He knew Saul was witchcraft. He knew Saul was a reject. He knew that Saul wasn't close to God. Because he knew in the spirit realm that God was sending the evil spirit to fight Saul. So David wasn't clueless. And David was a very supernatural seer. Hmm? I want you to see this. David was a supernatural seer. So David was in the spirit realm. David knew. That Saul was evil. But you never see David try to do any evil to Saul. Because David didn't have no time for the nonsense. David knew that his job was to work for Jesus. And to fulfill Jesus' assignment. Okay? David knew that his assignment must have been completed. And he wasn't going to let somebody jealous of him. Get him out of the pattern of his assignment. You understand that? David behaved wisely because he knew that the enemy was using Saul to make him miss his assignment. Because listen, Saul had already been rejected by God. So now Saul is trying to get David to do something so that he can be rejected too. Some of you all need to catch this in your life. If you follow the pattern of somebody rejected, God is going to reject you too. You understand? 
See, I learned this in ministry. I don't rejoice over people falling either. I just know not to follow their pattern. Because their pattern is what made God reject them. See, David didn't follow Saul's pattern. He did everything God told him to do. So when God told him, okay, behave wisely, he said, okay, let's do it, God. I'll do it. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Because he realized that if he had did something else, he was going to get the same punishment that Saul got to become a reject, become rejected. Huh? Praise God. When you love the Holy Spirit, you don't want to harm him. When you love the Holy Spirit, you don't want to harm him. And guess what? When I don't want to harm the Holy Spirit, I don't want to harm my man of God either. Because my man of God is the Holy Spirit revealed to me in human flesh. I can see his workings. I can see his demonstrations. I can see the Holy Spirit, his words, his focus, his character, his personality through my man of God. If God don't give you a personal man of God, most times, it's a sign that you're not really all that special. When God loves you, he's going to send somebody to you. Saints, here's the powerful thing about it. Your relationship with your man of God is one of the most powerful relationships you will ever experience in this life, if not the most powerful. Because people, they can please your flesh, they can do all this different stuff. But somebody that pleases God and can train you to please God are more of a necessity than a thousand cheerleaders. You can have a million cheerleaders in your life. If you have somebody in your life that will help you please God, praise God, that person is more important than any other voice. Because when you discourage, they're going to come to you and help you break that spirit. When you Want to curse God and die. Because you can be going through something so detrimental. I've seen people say, oh, I love God with all my heart. And then their mama just die all of a sudden. Then they start, they start changing. Wait, what happened? Well, how could he do this? What? <laughs> you asking God, how could he do this? You got to weigh out two things. Number one, he God. And number two, who told you it wasn't Satan? Okay, if your mama was smoking three levels of crack, sniffing it, just, just sniffing it. Three levels of crack, nose red as a mug, just, just, all of that. And then she passed out. You gonna blame God? Now her body can't take all that, 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 uh, that frosted flakes residue. Huh? The frosted flake residue just messed up. She couldn't take all of it. It just. You, so so you're going to get mad. God get the blame, right? Saints, like, like them mothers. Them mothers be knowing their child bad as I don't know what. They know they got a bad child. Then when that child die, he gets shot. Oh, oh no, God took my little boy from me. Boy was Satan, man. Your boy didn't listen to you. You shocked? He didn't listen to you. you. You was the one telling him not even to go out there. Now he gets shot. Oh, God took my boy. Why, why God get the blame? All the stuff that happened oh, is always God. But when good stuff happens, God, somebody makes, God makes somebody rich. Oh, it's not God. It's, it's, it's not of God. God give you a brand new house. Oh, God don't want us. He wants to store up treasures here, on, here up in heaven. Well, I'm not up in no doggone heaven. I'm down here. I'm about to store me up some treasures right here. 
Yeah, I messed some of y'all up. Some of y'all ain't never heard this before. I'm about to store me up some treasures right here. I ain't in no doggone heaven. I'm down here on the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to store up some treasures down here on the earth. I'm going to do it in both. Now, I ain't just dealing with just passing over. I'm going to bring what's over down and living it down here. And the people up there, they want you to be so cautious about the next life that you struggle in this life. Oh, that's the devil. You ain't got no money, no, no enjoyment, no hope. You living like a slave down here in Thompson when you get to heaven. After Jesus done shed his blood and whooped every demon, bust them dead in the eye, I whooped principalities. And then you still gonna struggle? You still gonna struggle? After he done whoops them all down, all of them, just every one of just whoops them down. You still gonna struggle after the Holy Ghost done been released to the earth with all power and glory <laughs> after the Holy Ghost been released to the earth with all grace, all ability of God moving on the inside of you. You still going to struggle? <laughs> Say, I refuse to struggle. Say it. Say it. I refuse to struggle. I refuse to struggle. I refuse to struggle. See, saints, uh, the revelation of Jesus is the enemy of struggle. The revelation of Jesus is the end of struggle. Christ in you Is a supernatural device in you. Is a supernatural device in you. Here's what's so powerful. And stay focused y'all. Stay focused. Stay focused on here. If you have Christ in you. The hope of glory. Why would you fall short of the glory that you already got in you? How? That don't make sense. If Christ is in me, the hope of glory, why would I fall short of the glory? How would that work? I'm falling short of something that's already in me. Wow. So, ignorance... My people perish for lack of knowledge. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 2 said that it's not good for the soul to be without knowledge. So here's what's going to take place. You missing the mark when you got the mark inside of you. You fell in the race when you already got the grace for the race on the inside of you. You are already moving in supernatural impartation from Jesus and you function as if you waiting for God to give you more power and more strength, more anointing, more ability, more supernatural, uh, uh, supernatural attributes. And you already got all of those things on the inside of you. Woman of God refuse to be like every other woman. Let me tell you about women. Women struggle with insecurity. They struggle with paranoia. They struggle with uh, jealousy. Refuse to be like every other woman. Be different as a woman. What's your difference as a woman? What's your difference as a woman? What distinguishes you? What's, what, as a woman, what's so virtuous about you? What's so virtuous about you? What's so virtuous? What is virtuous about you? What, what, what sets you apart from every other woman? 
And don't be trying to use your parts either. I need about 50 people to retweet me on here. I need about 50 people to retweet me on here. I need about 50 people to retweet me on here. I need about 50 people to retweet me on here. About, about five of them say, hey, hey, my shoulder, my shoulder. I've been working out my shoulder, my shoulder. My shirt and my shoulder make me, make me different. My, my, my shoulder make me different. Girl, ain't nobody looking at your shoulder. <laughs> Girl, ain't nobody looking at your shoulder. All right? You ain't even need that shoulder for nothing. <laughs> I'm going to use that shoulder for no purposes at all. No purpose in, in, intended. All right? You, you could be shoulderless. Hmm? You can shoulder lean all that. All right? You ain't going to need that shoulder for no purposes at all. You don't need your shoulder, no none of that. And you ask a girl, you, know, you about, well, what are you, what's your difference? What's different about you from every, every other woman? My shoulders. You know, I pick my shoulders... I know how to position my shoulders when I'm taking a picture. Fred, Frederick, we're going to call you out. Frederick, you is a real nigga. You is a real cracker. And we're going to crack a barrel you right now in five and four and three and two and one. We're going to crack a barrel. We're going to crack a barrel you out of here. You was a real cracker. We're going to cracker you back where you came from. We're going to cracker you back. Now look at this here. When you're distinguished as a woman, you're focused. Focused women are very distinguished. God will always send a man of God to give you something to focus on. God will always send a man of God to give you a mission for your submission. You understand? So that you don't submit to something that's not qualified for you. Because if you be honest, you have been in places where you have submitted yourself to people that wasn't even worthy of your submission. You gave your all to a church. And the church wasn't even God ordained. Imagine that. God didn't even bring the church into existence. And you had your loyalty. You weren't saying that. You're not going to talk about my pastor. That was not no pastor. A pastor is a divine leader over people that have been chosen and called by God. A pastor is a man or woman anointed by Jesus to protect the souls of people with the word of God, the fresh word of God. A pastor is a man or a woman that has been assigned by Jesus to a flock of people so that they would not sin against God. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. And saints, I pastor better most most of, my, most of the people with, with about 50, 55, doggone 55 years of worth of experience. I'm a pastor. And I've been pastoring for years. Saints, let me give you a secret. Do you understand what Peter did? Jesus had the glory fall. 
begin to happen. Peter said, let me build a tabernacle for all three of y'all to become pastors. That's what Peter was really trying to tell them. Peter was saying, I want all three of y'all to become pastors. But that's how we do it. This glory just can't fall. It, it got to be pastor. You got to have a building now. Jesus said, I don't want none of that. Don't try to house my spirit and try to pit me conjunction, pit me in conjunction. No, no, no. Let my people go. My sheep hear my voice. Another one they will not follow. Jesus dealt with the whole plan of God. Well, how he responded to Peter. Peter was talking about build, build a church. Jesus said, no, nah, I ain't with all that. I'm talking about Jesus. And, and then there's always some nigga righteous. One talking so, well, what you trying to say? You trying to say that we ain't supposed to have no church building? That he, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to tell you that Jesus didn't promote no church building. He, he promoted people to be the church. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He didn't promote people to be the church. He didn't promote no building. He promoted people being built. See, saints, I'm in a phase. I'm not building a building. I'm building people. That's where I'm at. That's my assignment. Right now, my assignment is not to build no building. My, my assignment is to build people. I want to see people built. I want to raise you up to be fortified where no evil spirit can take you down ever. No storm. I ain't trying to build a building. I want to build you. I'm a body builder. Body of Christ. Bodybuilder. Yeah. And guess what? Love is our steroids. We'll bury bond you. We'll make wire and wire. Love is our steroids. Love is our steroids. This is how you keep the body at an accelerated strength. You understand that? That's how you keep the body of Christ at a supernatural strength. So supernatural that even the devil would think that you're cheating. Do you understand that? So much strength that the devil would think that you're doing something illegal. Saints, do you know that you be so rich that the devil think that you're doing something wrong? Saints, I remember. I remember uh, I was on the highway one day. This is a, this a real true story. And while I was on the highway, this is what took place. I saw this white man, he was a he was a road rager. You understand? Now I noticed I was praying in the spirit at the time. So I'm real heightened. Like I, I know I know the spirits that are in different vehicles. Like, I have been in vehicles, I said, this is a spirit of suicide, and the car just room, and they, and they got one of them crazy Mexican more, like they speaking in tongues. There's about five Mexicans inside that mug, all of them sitting on each other's lap, just speeding like they're in the arcade. About to go piss some wallpaper on somebody's walls. About to go cut some grass. 
about to go fix somebody plumbing issue. And I know the spirit that's inside the vehicle, even without seeing the person. I already know the spirit because in the spirit realm, you don't need these natural eyes. In the spirit realm, you just need your spiritual eyes. There was a story in the Old Testament. The prophet was getting blind, but God still told him that the person that was standing before him was tricking him. I'll talk about that story another time. Because even though his natural eyes was getting blind, his spiritual eyes were still working. God was still using him prophetically to know that the person was lying. Now, here's back to my story. Stick with me. Stick with me. Don't drift. Some of y'all got ADD. You drift. I, I start talking about somebody, then you go jump over to them. I ain't talking about that man. I'm talking about this story right here. Don't, don't switch. You got to stick with where God is going. Stick with the direction of God. Not there on the phone. <laughs> looking like looking like that girl that did a video on me. <laughs> Shark mouth. Shark mouth. My mother was on a bit. Shark mouth. Girl, I'm about to take you to the dentist. <laughs> if I was her boy, <laughs> if I was her boyfriend, she'd be like, uh, I'd be like, babe, what you want for uh what you want for Christmas? What you want for your birthday? I was like, oh, I wanna go to Hawaii. No, nah, nigga, you I'm taking you to the dentist. This is the last day I'm going to be looking at this shark mouth. God did not promise me this. Either that or I'm leaving. I done, talk, I done got my bags packed and all of that. Either that or I'm leaving. I'm not going to be looking at this shark mouth. God did not promise me this. All right? Either you're going to let me fix your mouth. We ain't going to know why. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Hawaii. Let me go to Africa. I want to go to my home country. Yes, I want to go to see my motherland. My motherland. We ain't gonna go see no motherland. Cause your mother is a problem. That's why your mouth is just like this. Your mother had the same mouth. She had the same type of mouth. I'm tired of this. We about to fix this mouth. <laughs> We ain't, we ain't gonna take you to see your motherland because your motherland gonna release another curse to your mouth. <laughs> it seems people be telling some, we about to go to the mother country. That is not my mother. My mother did not come from no Africa. <laughs> my mother is Sarai. I want to see my mother country. I am not going to be linking up my no mother country to no curse, man. Y'all better stop claiming that as your mother motherland. That is not no motherland for me. I ain't dealing with race. I'm dealing with grace. Now, I was I knew what spirit was inside of the vehicle. So I'm driving on the highway, but I'm praying in the spirit. Here's what's very powerful, saints. I begin to sense turbulence as if when I'm in a service or like you're doing deliverance and stuff like that. That's why it's like you're in a hawk mode. Because you're in a mode like, listen, Satan, I'm coming for you. I felt like that same built up out of nowhere. So I knew, okay, sign in the room. I'm dealing with, I'm going to deal with spiritual attack here on this road right now. I know it because I felt it. Now, here, here's what's crazy. I'm in the car alone. And I'm in my fast car. 
So what I did was, I did like the movies. I did three lanes in like one time. Like vroom, 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 vroom. All the way over to the other land. Uh, uh, the other lane. Now here's what's crazy. Then I see a white truck. Vroom, 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 vroom. Switch to the other lane. Same with me. So when I did that, I said, got it. I know what it was now. It was the white expedition behind me. And God said, yeah, that's him. Now, here's what God began to say to me that shocked me as I stand in the uh, presence. Look at this. Then the Lord told me, he said, son, they're getting your license plate to call the police to stop you on the road. This is why they are anxious to get behind you. I said, well, Jesus, what I did? He said, nothing. He said, I'm going to tell you what to do. He said, you're going to swap three lanes and you're going to lose them. Then you're going to get off of the highway. Now, saints, I did just like the movies. I played like I was driving. That's a vroom, 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 vroom. And boom, and I was out. Now, saints, as the Lord lives, when I got off the highway, that's why I got a fast car. My, my car go over at 100 in no time. Now, when I got over to the other side, out off the highway, God told me, watch what you're going to see on the highway and watch what you observe. When I looked on the highway, I saw a swarm of police officers uh, traveling onto the same highway that I was just on. But I, I, I lost them. Let me just tell you this. I'm smarter than this world system too. I don't even fear this world's government because I'm 50 steps ahead of all things. <laughs> Forget what you heard, saints, and I'm, I'm not a dumb person, not even just a little bit. <laughs> Be very hard for you to trick me, because, listen, I, <laughs> I'm linked up with Jehovah God, man. I, I'll, catch, I'll catch that system slipping. Because, saints, they got all on the highway. I was staked out watching them. In my car laughing. <laughs> God said, don't go on the highway until I tell you. When I went on the highway, I was good. When I got back, uh, me and uh, had Zendaya, her doctor's appointment. We took Zendaya to a doctor's appointment. I was on time. I could have said, Lord, I need to go right now. I'm trying to get to my, my doctor's appointment. Just follow the voice of God. Leave your pride alone. And whatever he tell you to do it, do, do, do it. Saints, this is why you need the voice of God. It's not like, oh, I just, maybe I need the voice. No, no, you need the voice of God because there's going to be things happening in a day. That are against you that you don't even know about. What that spirit trying to bother me? He don't. The person is just being used by the devil. They're being used by the devil. If you are prepared 24-7. You don't have to prepare to become prepared. If you prepared, you don't have to prepare to become prepared. Some of you all should have done had your clothes on. You still get in dress. You should have been, been had your clothes on. You just get in dress. You should have been had it on. You got a destination that you're supposed to reach. 
Don't have your shoes off. Don't have your clothes off. Be dressed. Be prepared. Because what's going to happen is Satan is always planning against you in a day, in a night. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I don't sow when I'm in a famine. I sow before the famine come. I don't sow when I got debt. I sow before the debt comes. I don't sow when I'm being attacked. I sow before the attack comes. And I name my seeds off of attacks as well. Because I know. I am prepared before it ever happens. See, some people, they wait until they get utterly broke. Then they say, oh, I need to sow a seed. If you were sowing, you wouldn't have got under utterly broke. Sometimes we wait until last minute to do what God has given us to do as our weapons. And then we destroy ourselves. And then God got to give us mercy to rebuild us up from the destruction. And he'll do that. We praise God for that. That's not a knock in your face. You, you, if God choose to be merciful to you, praise God for that. But what I'm telling you is prevention is better than detention. Remember that. Prevention is better than detention. Instead of the enemy detaining you, I'd rather have God sustaining you. Prevention is better than detention. Because when you're in detention, you're in prison. You're enslaved to Satan. The enemy can laugh at you. The enemy can destroy you. He can do what he wants with you. Stay in the hands of God. And humility gives me the ability to locate God's hand. Humility gives me the ability to locate God's hand. I find God's hand through humility. God's hand will always be someone that God sends to your life to protect you. Sometimes we fight our protection. Saints, do you know that your, your, your parents will seem bad to you when you're a teenager? Why is that? Your parents will always seem like they are your enemy when you're a teenager. Why? Because you're in a battle with your sinful nature and your parent will stop it. You got a rebellious side to you and your parents will stop it. You got a foolish side to you. Sometimes teenagers say, I'm going over to their house. And your mama say, no, don't go over to their house. Why I can't go over to their house? They always, their mama let them go over to their house. You don't understand that they're on their way to hell. You can't compare yourself to what other teenagers and other people are doing because they on their way to hell. You got the seal of God on your forehead. So God will stop you even if he got to use your parents. And listen, listen, your parents can be demonic. But when it's time for God to use them, if you about to make a wrong decision, he'll use them. Because you're chosen. But you'll never see that if you are in the flesh. In the flesh, you can't see your God-sent connection as an angel. In the flesh, you only can see them as a demon because your flesh hates them. Understand this. Who God sends to you is not loved by your flesh. You know, unless that, you know, unless. <laughs> now listen. 
your flesh is not going to have your divine connection as a friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's right. I saw a donkey on there. I thought somebody was trying to be nasty. I thought. Listen, I need 50 people to retweet me on Twitter right now. I need 100 people to share me on Facebook. Some people ain't do it yet. I need 100 people to share me on Facebook. I need 50 people to retweet me on Twitter. Your flesh don't love your man of God. Your flesh hate him. It's your spirit that loves him. If you're not walking in the spirit, you can't love him. If you're walking in the flesh, you'll miss your divine destiny. Understand that. You're not going to experience Elijah and the double portion unless you walk amongst Elijah in the spirit. If you walk amongst Elijah in the flesh, you'll never experience it. This is why you got to stay in the spirit. When you stay in the spirit concerning Elijah, you can receive the double portion. If you walk in the flesh, demons are controlling your sight. If you walk in the flesh, demons are controlling what you view. The spirit cannot release Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God has been poured out into your heart by the Holy Spirit. Until you master walking in the Spirit, you can't move in supernatural money. Supernatural money moving for you, you got to be someone that's walking in the Spirit and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You know what long-suffering is all about? Being uncomfortable at a workplace. Being uncomfortable sharing a place, an apartment with somebody. Being uncomfortable living with somebody. Being uncomfortable having to catch a bus to go to your workplace, your school. Being uncomfortable not eating what you want to eat. Being uncomfortable having to make sacrifices so that you can obey the voice of God concerning people, concerning relationships, concerning your finances, concerning your thoughts, concerning your schedule, concerning your decisions, your plans, your vision, your assignments. Long suffering mean that you are willing to let God fulfill his plan through you, even if it's going to cause you to experience pain. You got to bear the fruits of the spirit before you can bear wealth. You got to bear the fruits of the spirit before you can wear supernatural money. Supernatural money is connected to you walking in the spirit. That supernatural money moves for you because it, it is a reward. Because you diligently seeking God. You doing what God tell you to do. God have you walk in the sowing principle. You got to sow yourself. You got to sow yourself into the will of God. You got to sow your mind into divine thoughts. You got to sow your eyes into the vision of the Lord. You got to sow your mouth into prophesying. You got to sow your ears into only listening to the word. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You got to sow your heart into purity. You got to sow your body into Holy Spirit led activity. You got to sow your relationships into discernment so that you can discern what relationships you don't need no more. Discernment always increases eliminations. Discernment increases eliminations. God going to show you who you need to cut off. All these different sowings that God going to have you do, walk in them. Don't be afraid to sow yourself. Some people are hiding themselves from Jesus. You don't want to give him all of you. Some parts of you like, ah, I ain't going to do that. 
Give all yourself to Jesus. Let him take all of you. Don't be afraid. He got you. He got you. All of me belong to Jesus. My finances, everything. Jesus knows he can have it. Everything that I do is led by the Spirit. You say, oh, you can't say that. I done heard you say, nigga. I done, I done heard you say titties. I done, I done heard you call all that. God made them. God made your dog on titties. God made your body parts. The reason why it seemed perverted to you, because you haven't even been freed in your mind concerning his creation. You ain't free. God created sex, but if you talk about sex, oh, we don't need to be talking about this. Also, God, he, he created something that we don't need to be talking about. Wow. But we still got babies. And you still getting some on the low. Some of y'all on here. You still getting some on the low. And about five, five of you still in Sweet Willie. Sweet Willie ain't right. You still in Sweet Willie hit it. Sweet, Sweet Willie still doing it on the low. Every time he knocked the door, y'all. Sweet Willie is still hearing it. He ain't not supposed to be hearing it no more. God done told you, don't let him hit it no more. And you just let two more times happen. He said not to let him hit it no more. I'm, I'm telling you again, because God said you ain't listening to me. I'm telling you again. You keep on letting him hit it. He keeps setting you back. He pinned them demons inside of you. I know you ain't come up pregnant, but he pinned some demons inside of you. That nigga has pinned some demons inside of you. <laughs> Every time he hit it, he'd be pinning some demons inside of you. That nigga's pinned some demons inside of you. I'm done now. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to somebody on it. I'm done. There's son in the room. That nigga's pinned some demons inside of you. I'm giving you the 411. Sowing is how you get to your destiny. Sowing. You got to sow yourself. You got to sow your mind. You got to sow your body. You got to sow money. Sowing money is so powerful because you're showing Jesus that even though I need this to buy stuff, I'm going to give it to you, your work, your man of God, your, your gospel. I'm going to give it to you. And God promised that he's going to make sure that you get abundance in return. Some people will never see it because they never do it. Well, how do I know I'm supposed to, this is going to work for me? Because Jesus said, and Jesus never lied to nobody. I know it. See, Jesus won't take you out of this small life that you got right now. You bigger than what you got right now. Some of y'all up there, you, 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 you know that you bigger than that. You know more than what you got. You know, there's some of you all watching me right now. You know more stuff than what you carry in natural possession. You got, you got enough ammunition on you to kill the demon of poverty, lack, and all satanic abuse. For you to take abuse. All of that stuff. You got enough weapons in your arsenal to destroy all demonic powers. So do it. The devil can't stop you from sowing. I've heard people say, God got to bless me more before I, before I can sow more. Sow at the level that you want to sow. Right now. Don't wait till, don't wait till next week and, and tomorrow and what you, what you feel. Sow at the level that you want to sow right now. That's what the devil like to do with us. Like to have us sowing uh, according to what we got. No, I'm going to sow beyond my ability. I've had that happen to me. God can pay $100 in my hand. Devil tells him, well, you only can give 10%. No, nah, nigga, I'm going to give 90. Let's see what you're going to do. I'm only going to keep 10. Let's see what you're going to do. 
God going to respond to me at the 90 that I give. Watch what, watch it. And God always responded to me. Because that nigga Rachi Satan would try to have you up there reason out. Oh, I only got $100. Oh, you only can sell 10 And he'll mock you too. And you only can send $10, right? That's all you can do. <laughs> 90. I'm only going to keep 10. What you got to say about it? What you got to say about it, devil? You can't stop my sewing. Because my sewing going to stop you. See, he's saying Satan is a bully. You got to stop that bully in spirit while you in the school of the Holy Ghost. He want to bully you while you in school. While God training you. While God teaching you. When you're learning to do good. Learning to do well. He want to torture you and torment you and bully you. You ain't going to do it. I'm going to sow my way out. The seed works. Some of y'all know when you sow, you feel a release. But you don't keep on doing it. Why? The devil stopping you. Because he know what's going to crush his head. He don't want you to use the weapon continuously. Because just like in, when you're in a boxing match, you watch how they keep on boxing. They knock the sucker out after a while. That's the same way what happened when you're sowing seed. After a while, you knock that sucker out of your finances. You knock that sucker out of your children. You knock that sucker out of your season. You knock that sucker out of your life. And you take the championship again. The championship already belonged to you. You sow until you crush his head and then he out of the ring and you reigning and ruling as the champion. All wealth start flowing in your direction. All riches start flowing in your direction because you done knocked that sucker out. What you think going to happen? The tormenting demon can't fight you because that sucker been TKO'd. Now you, what, what, what you think going to take place? Finances can't fight you because he been TKO'd. Money can't fight you because he been TKO'd. Debts can't fight you because he been TKO'd. Sickness can't fight you because he been TKO, T, TKO. Your accusers can't fight you because he been TKO'd. The seed knocks Satan out. Sowing slains Goliath. Sowing slains Goliath. Sowing slays Goliath. Sowing hangs Haman. You understand that? Sowing hangs Haman. When you sowing, you hang Haman. When you sowing, you hang Haman. You remember Haman was trying to get the Jews? When you sow, you hang the person plotting against your life. Some of y'all need to do that. You got too much jealousy in you. You can't afford not to sow. See, saints, I can't, I can't afford not to sow. I got too much boondaggers plotting for me. I got too much boondaggers. So I, I got to obey God with my money. You'll never find me in no strip club. I ain't trying to look at them, them used titties. No. I can't go to a strip club anyway because I ain't going to sew nothing. I come for free. <laughs> no, I ain't got, I ain't paying no tithes and offerings here. No, I'm not paying for no used titties. I, I'm not going to be up there tithing and offering off of this. No, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You ain't saving my soul. Huh? You can sow your way out of any income that you're receiving. Some of y'all receive monthly income. You can sow your way out of that income. You just got to stick with Jesus and you got to work it. Stop trying to get long-term blessing with short-term obedience. My God. Somebody, somebody quote me on that. Stop trying to get long-term blessings with short-term obedience. Stop trying to get long-term harvests with short-term seeds. Think about that. If you sow for long enough, you'll be financially strong enough. If you sow for long enough, you'll be money strong enough. There's a money anointing. There's a money mantle. And when it gets strong on you, money is dominated by you in the earth. You can call money. You can demand money, command money, expand money, increase money. You can do all that. 
You become a financial ruler, a ruler over much, because you experience God's touch. Jehovah Jireh is not a liar. El Shaddai will not let you die. El Shaddai is your supply. There's a restoration of riches in sowing. Because you was created to be rich. There's a restoration of wealth in sowing. Your wealth is already in the seed. You're not trying to get wealth to come to you. Wealth already came to you the minute that your hand opened up and said that you was going to honor God financially in the earth. Sowing unlocks the wealthy places that God ordained for you to enjoy wealth in. There's more than one wealthy place. There's more than one promised land for your life. The more you obey God, the more you get there. The mantle for money is in the seed. You say, well, prophet, I just sow. You got a money mantle on you. Work that mantle. The same way we pray in order to receive wisdom and strength from God. The same way we forgive to receive peace from God. The same way we decree to receive the atmosphere of God. The same way that we praise to receive the inhabitation of God. The same way we sow to receive the wealth of God. The riches of God. The prosperity of God. The blessing of God. Favor of God. And when favor comes, the door going to open even if the enemy say no. The enemy can't stop you from moving in your wealthy place. Say, I, I'm moving in wealth glory right now. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. I'm moving in wealth glory right now. I'm moving in wealth glory right now. Say it. I'm moving in wealth glory right now. See, the blessing of Abraham is wealth glory. Abraham moving wealth glory. You know how many enemies Abraham had? But the wealth had to keep on coming to him. Money had to keep on coming to him because Abraham moved in wealth glory. And remember, the Bible told us that even Jesus came so that we can move in this riches glory. The riches anointing. See, Jesus paid the price on the cross for money to become your servant, for money to serve you. For money to come to you. For money to listen to you. For money to respond to you. Money has been programmed by God to overtake the sower. And you can feel the money anointing. The money anointing is tangible. The money glory is tangible. You'll know when God about to put some money in your, money in your hands. You'll feel that anointing. That anointing will start flowing on you. You'll feel it. Marcos Tia Karama. You'll feel that money grace, that money glory, because it's the ability of God. It's not according to what man can do. God can do greater. You don't pitch your whole life what this man gonna pay me. What God gonna pay you. Cause when God pay you, it's gonna come to you no matter what man say. When God paying you. See, see. Listen, sometimes the enemy don't even want to pay you back. God will say, I got you. I'm going to pay you back until I get that sucker. You need to know that when you're sowing, because there's open portal seeds. When you're up there sowing in the hundreds, sowing in, in, sowing in thousands, you underneath open portal seeds. You got a portal where you can decree money. Yeah. You ever release seeds that move you? In the ground, them open portal seeds. Meaning in that portal, there is money that is ordained. It is scheduled to come to you through that portal. So here's what's happening. If the devil try to pit port, uh, uh, a blockage in your portals, that open portal has to flow for you no matter what the devil does. Because it's an open portal seed. See, uh, Jacob was underneath that open portal. Open portal sowing brings open portal supernatural money. Open portal wealth. That open portal sowing, open portal seeds, bring open portal provision. That provision can't be stopped. It can't be hindered. That money will flow because Jesus is now manifesting himself as Jehovah Jireh and he's strong in this financial anointing. Has, have you ever thought about it that the financial anointing on Jesus is unstoppable? Well, guess what happened when he put it on you? You become unstoppable. 
that money got flow in your direction no matter who tried to sabotage your finances. Who tried to put a word curse on your success? Who tried to stop your financial provision? Ain't nothing can stop that money from coming to you. God will tattoo your financial check and hand it to you. Nobody going to steal your check. He, he will tattoo. He'll mark your financial check and get it to you. And saints, there's financial, uh, I call this, I write this down, financial gymnastics. We talk about prophetic gymnastics. Write that down. Financial gymnastics. I'm hearing God say this to me. Maraku Ziviata. There's financial gymnastics. You know what financial gymnastics is? God will work around demons to get money to you. God will pick the pieces of the puzzle together so that you can be rich. Financial gymnastics. God will prophetically speak over you as long as, as, long as you stay in faith, stay in sowing, stay in the decree anointing. You decree God will speak over you. He'll back you and get that money in your direction. Financial gymnastics. God will create ways to lose money in your direction. And he'll make you a wealth recipient. Say, I am a wealth recipient. I am a wealth recipient.